If you've ever had an MRI scan of your brain, you may have received a copy of your brain image. These are fun and educational to look at, but you can make the experience even better by 3D printing your brain. 3D printing a brain used to be a complicated procedure that required many steps, but a recent development called Brain2Print.org makes the process much easier. This website, created by Chris Rorden and colleagues, allows you to drag and drop your brain image file into the web browser and then convert it into a 3D printer readable format, such as an STL file. You do all of this from your web browser and the data doesn't leave your computer and isn't read by any external servers, protecting your privacy. So let's see how to do it. After you get your brain scanned, Ask the scan technician whether they can convert your anatomical image to what is called a nifty file, which will have a .nii or .nii.gz extension. This is a data format that can be read by many different software programs, including Brain2Print. If you don't have a nifty file yet, and instead you have your DICOM files, which are the raw imaging files from the scanner, you can easily convert them to a nifty file using this website linked here. You can also find a link in the description box down below. All you need to do is click and drag the folder that contains all of your DICOM files. Here, mine are located in a folder called Andy Anatomical. I click and drag it into this web browser and I can see my converted nifty image in these orthogonal views and also in a converted 3D model of the head. Once I'm satisfied with that, I click on Save Selected File, which will save it to your Downloads folder. Here, I'm going to rename it T1.nii, just for compactness and readability purposes, and then place this nifty file in the same folder that contains my DICOM images. But you can place it wherever you want. Now let's navigate to the brain2print.org website. The first thing you'll notice is that a sample brain is already loaded for you, which you can 3D print in case you don't have your own brain image. If you do have your own nifty file, like I do, just click and drag it into the web browser. Now you can see that there are three orthogonal viewing planes corresponding to the axial, coronal, and sagittal views of the brain, along with a 3D model of the head. Now click on the drop down menu next to segmentation model, which will give you many different options. Brain2Print will use your computer's graphics processor, if available, or its CPU, and you can choose whichever combination of accuracy and memory usage is best for your machine. For example, tissue, GWM, high ACK, low MEM will attempt to segment gray and white matter of the brain with high accuracy, but trying to use less memory. This will probably be fine for most purposes, but feel free to explore the other variations as well. Once you select one of the segmentation options, you'll see a progress bar down here, and this can take around 30 to 60 seconds on a current machine. I'm gonna fast forward until it's done. Once the segmentation is finished, you can see the gray matter highlighted in red. You can also check this box next to Clip Plane and then use your mouse wheel, if you have one, to scroll up and down to reveal different amounts of the brain within the skull. You can also change the background opacity and the overlay opacity using these sliders at the top of the window to either show or hide varying amounts of the background brain and the overlay. Now click on Create Mesh. The default is to use better quality, which will create a solid brain model. If you select faster, you can choose to create a hollow shell of the brain of varying thickness, which uses less material to print and could be a little bit faster. In this case, I'm going to use four millimeters. Smoothing will round off some of the rough edges and increasing the simplify percent can greatly reduce the size of your file while still mostly preserving the fidelity of the image. In this case, I'll use 50%.
Once you have the parameters you want, click apply and it will generate a mesh after a few seconds. Once that is complete, you can look at it again in your orthogonal viewing panes or in this 3D model. And if you're satisfied with it, click on save mesh. Select the format that you want. In this case, I'll stick with STL and also the size that you want. In this case, I'll use full scale and then click save. You now have the file you will need for 3D printing and you can put this on a thumb drive or email it to yourself. I don't have a 3D printer of my own, so I went to the Shapiro Library where they have the Design Lab Workshop. And this workshop has many different 3D printers that can be used free of charge by both students and faculty at the University of Michigan. One of the employees helped me load my STL file into a software package called Prusa Slicer where we could make the necessary adjustments. It turns out that printing the original size would take too long, so we reduced the size to half and also simplified it a little bit to make the file size smaller. But in the end, it looks pretty good, and now we're ready to print. The next step is to select the color, and originally I wanted gray, but they were out of stock. So I selected matte skin, which is kind of a fleshy pink color. That still looks like a brain. This is the raw material we'll be using, which is called filament. It's plastic that gets heated so that we can shape and mold it into the brain that we want. Then all we have to do is load the filament, press the go button, and wait. For quite a long time, actually. So here's my brain being printed, and this is going to take about 13 hours. We're going to leave it there overnight at the library. I'm going to go home, relax for a little bit, and come back the following day to pick up my fully 3D printed brain. The next morning, as soon as I woke up, I ran over to the library where my brain was waiting for me in the workshop. All I had to do at this point was use some pliers to peel away any of the supports or any extra filaments. And here's my brain, nice, clean, and 3D printed. So here's what the finished product looks like. And I hope this encourages you to 3D print your own brain if you haven't already. This can also be a good incentive for participants, kind of a bonus, in addition to the money they get to get their brain scanned for research projects. And they can be used for not just being fun, being used as paperweights, party favors, but you can also use them to say, study neuroanatomy as well. There's practical applications. If you want more information about other web-based tools developed by Chris Rorden and other researchers, click here for a video overview of a trip I took to the University of South Carolina a couple of years ago, where many different people presented different tools they're working on that people can access from any kind of operating system, any computer, really anywhere if they have an internet connection. So I hope this is fun and educational for you, and I'll see you all next time. Good luck and have fun 3D printing your own brain.